Donald Trump, when uh, the events in Charlotte, Nazis rallied, there was a counter demonstration. A Nazi rammed his car into a group of people, uh, killing one, injuring over 30 others. Donald Trump initially said there were violence on many sides. Then the following day, uh, he must have been dressed down by one of his babysitters, and he sort of finally, in this very strained way, condemned the haters, Klan, and neo-Nazis. Then the next day, when we played it yesterday, had a full meltdown, uh, said there were good people on all sides, and called out the alt-left for being violent, and then said, where does it end? Washington owned slaves. Jefferson owned slaves. And here he is uh, in tweets from this morning. This is just an hour ago. I mean, he's really... This is this might even be before his first uh, KFC snack of the day. Uh, he is having an absolute meltdown. Uh, and does it start? Yeah, okay, it starts in the bottom. Sad to see the history and culture of our country being ripped apart with the removal of our beautiful statues and monuments. These are monuments and statues to Confederate terrorists who opposed, in fact, the creation of the modern version of this country. Worth noting. And... Um, fought a battle on behalf of slavery. Um, and, and by the way, like, let's be really clear. There isn't a sort of cute, you know, there's complexity to the Civil War, obviously. But make no mistake, the kind of general popular understanding that slavery was a core issue and what they were fighting about was, in fact, the case. Not from, like, a northern human rights perspective. Obviously, northern states still, you know, extraordinary levels of racism and white supremacy but it was an economic battle and the south economy was built on just on human bondage i mean people really need to think about that there's nothing antiseptic about this systemic rape murder torture and enforced labor every grotesque thing you can imagine Sad to see the history and culture of our country being ripped apart with the removal of our beautiful statues and monuments. You, and this is the next one, can't change history, but you can learn from it. Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, who's next? Washington, Jefferson, so foolish. Now, I said on, uh, on, on my show that I, particularly Jefferson, is hard to historicize. He was, even by the standards of his day, a truly obscene guy so even as an example i mean <laughs> it sounds you know weird to say and none of it's exculpatory but you know washington freed his slaves how big of him when he passed away jefferson when he passed away made sure they were uh, sold being that as it may i mean sam pointed this out statues are also not sort of literal representations of individuals it's also about what they represent they weren't put up by historians they right and and washington represents the founding of this country not a southern slave state. Uh, and Jefferson uh, also wrote, uh, you know, in spite of his, you know, hideous behavior and beliefs, obviously wrote movingly, you know, a, a logic of universal human rights, which could be turned against him because they apply uh, to all humans. That's what we're honoring. Uh, Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson were fighting again against the creation of the modern United States and for the preservation of slavery or states' rights. Also, the beauty that is being taken out of our cities, towns, and parks will be greatly missed and never be able to be comparably replaced. Well, I, for one, sure hope they're not comparably replaced. Uh, it's always been obvious, first and foremost for Donald Trump, is his various emotional and mental issues and problems and resentments and narcissism and tantrums and sociopathy and stupidity and greed uh, and scam artistry. Uh, but if he does have a consistent instinct towards anything, going back to his father and him, uh, you know, screening out uh, uh, tenants uh, to mind-bogglingly stupid comments he made in the 80s, about who he wanted, about wanting Jews to handle his money, about how being an educated black would be a big advantage. Um, Central Park Five? Central Park Five. He said, he said, with regards to what happened in Charlottesville with white supremacist alt-right Nazi terrorism, 
that he watched it more closely than the press and he needed to get all the facts. Whereas in the 80s, he took out a front page ad calling for the death penalty, reinstatement of the death penalty to kill some teenagers of color who are all, have all been exonerated even though they had their lives ruined because he was part of the racist mob that blamed them for that horrific attack in Central Park in the late 80s. Uh, to the extent there's anything that's consistent besides his bloviating stupidity and narcissism, it's his bigotry. And anybody, and by the way, standing by it is not Mitch McConnell saying there's no such thing as good Nazi. Standing by it is anybody in Congress not saying we need to evoke 25th Amendment or get this guy out of office immediately or demanding he resign. If you're not doing that, you're complicit. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.